This is Mrs. Miller, your teacher at ELA Academy. Welcome to Essay Basics Part 7. Today, I'll be demonstrating how to write a solid expository paragraph. If you haven't watched Part 4 yet, be sure to do that. It lays the foundation for what we're doing today. Also, check out Parts 5 and 6 to see demonstrations for narrative and descriptive paragraphs. Quick review in case you didn't watch the previous videos. In general, a body paragraph should have three components. A topic sentence, which is the main idea, concrete details, which are facts and other objective information, and commentary, which is your interpretation, thoughts, and analysis of the concrete details. But each mode of writing also has its own special makeup. Expository writing will mostly feature facts, logical reasoning, statistics, and anecdotes. Now, I've occasionally heard people debate whether including an anecdote means that you've changed from the expository to the narrative mode. This issue is especially important on state standardized tests when the rubric might disqualify an essay that isn't written in the correct mode. I can't answer the question for every case. All I can say is that anecdotes have always been a feature of expository writing out in the real world. And my colleagues and I discovered that our students performed better when they could use them. But I would definitely look at actual scored essays on your particular test to see whether the graders are penalizing students for using anecdotes. Better safe than sorry. The essay I'll use for today's demonstration is this one from Essay Basics Part 2. This is where I talk about the risk I took by leaving the classroom and starting ELA Academy. We'll actually look at both body paragraphs on this one because I think it'll be helpful. So here are the main ideas that we'll focus on. This is the cause paragraph. A couple of years ago, my school required all teachers to learn how to create video lessons. And then here's the effect paragraph. When I saw how effective these recorded lessons were for my students, I decided that I wanted to make instructional videos full time. Here you see that like I did in the narrative and descriptive demos, I've put together a simple table to help me brainstorm. However, I'm not splitting each paragraph into types of information like I did in those episodes. I just don't think that would be as helpful here. I'm just going to list the facts that I want to include in each paragraph and what I thought about those facts. Let's get started on the cause paragraph. So here's the most important sentence for the cause paragraph, just so that we can focus on that. A couple of years ago, my school required all teachers to learn how to create video lessons. So now I'm going to kind of explain what happened when we did that. First of all, it's important to know that I worked at a one-to-one -one school. That's where each student had a laptop issued and we had an online classroom that we were expected to maintain. We were supposed to be paperless. Of course, we printed all kinds of stuff anyways, but um, we were supposed to put all of our handouts and worksheets and stuff on the online classroom and have them do as much on the actual computer as possible. So part of our professional development was technology, and we had to make sure that we learned how to use certain online tools and software and things like that. And one of the things we had to do was record and deliver a video lesson. So Tech PD requirements, record and deliver video lesson. And I remember at the time I was a little bit annoyed it was yet another thing added to my big to-do list, and I didn't feel like I had enough time to learn something new like that. A colleague and I decided to work together on it. We thought that would make it easier. And, okay, so on the video itself, we decided to do a walkthrough for brainstorming and drafting an essay. So in the video, we would demonstrate each little chunk 
and then we would prompt the students to pause and do that little bit and then, then we would demonstrate another chunk and they would pause and do that part so that's how that video worked So it actually ended up being kind of fun. My colleague was being a bit silly and that, that made it kind of fun and lighthearted. And when we finished the video, we actually liked it, but it still felt like a lot of work because we thought it was much easier to just do it in class in real time rather than do all the planning and record and re-record and do all of that. Okay, whoops. Easier, there we go. All right, uh, I think that looks okay for the cause paragraph. So let's move on to the effect paragraph. Let's look at that sentence again, just so that we're focused on it during brainstorming. When I saw how effective these recorded lessons were for my students, I decided that I wanted to make instructional videos full time. Okay, so I've got to talk about how effective it was. So what did I see that told me it was effective? All right, um, I, was I was actually very surprised. Our students actually put their earbuds in and just totally concentrated on the lesson. We saw them pausing a lot and writing and even going back to rewatch parts of the demonstration. And I remember feeling a little bit miffed. We didn't, I didn't feel like I got that kind of focused attention with a live lesson. I was actually a little bit jealous of my own recorded lesson. But I had to remind myself at least it was still me in the video lesson. And I felt like I had to kind of step back from my ego a little bit and realize that this kind of lesson delivery seemed to make them more interested than watching me at the front of the classroom. And what made it seem to work for them really well was that they could work at their own pace, they could watch parts again, and they actually had fewer distractions than with a regular lesson. And I was also thinking about students who were absent and they could come in for tutoring to get the whole lesson if they wanted to. But in reality, most students did not come for tutoring. So I would give them this really, really short version of the lesson, like a minute before class, or they'd get a confused version from a classmate. So I realized how much a video lesson would actually help absentees to keep up with the rest of the class. And then 
Okay, so I can look at them working, but the real test is when they turn in their essays. So were the essays actually any better? Were they actually doing the work or did they just look like they were working and just playing around on the computer, playing games or something when I wasn't watching? So were the essays any good? Yes, they were. They were actually a lot better than the last one. They looked like they thought them out better. They included more details. They spent more time on them. So that proves that the video lesson was very successful. Okay, so I've been talking about how effective they were, but I can't forget the last part of that sentence. I decided that I wanted to make instructional videos full time. So um, what made me really think about it was I thought about Khan Academy, and how popular they were and how much they seemed to help math students. And I thought maybe something similar for ELA might be helpful. So I talked it over with my husband. We talked it over for a long time and eventually decided to leave the classroom and start ELA Academy. which remembering the, the prompt was a risk, okay? And so, you know, in the intro and conclusion, we're talking about the risk part of this, but I have to keep that in mind while I'm brainstorming the body paragraphs and make sure that I'm showing something to do with what risk I was taking and why it was risky. Okay, so now I'm looking at my brainstorming and I feel like I have enough for the cause paragraph but I'm noticing that the effect paragraph is a lot longer. And actually what's making it longer is this last part. And I'm starting to think that maybe I need to split this into two paragraphs because I think I have really two different things going on here. I've got how the video worked with the students. And then I've got me thinking about Khan Academy and how I might start something similar with ELA. So I think that I'm going to end up changing it from a four paragraph essay to a five paragraph essay. So I'm just gonna make a little note here. And maybe develop that just a little bit more in its own paragraph. Hopefully you've watched the other demo videos and already know how this is going to go. Before I start writing, I want to color code my notes so that I can see whether I have a good mix of concrete details and commentary. Okay, here is the color coded version. I have concrete details in red, and these are just facts, things that happened. And in green, I have the commentary. That's my thoughts and feelings and my analysis of the facts. So it looks like I do have a good mixture of concrete details and commentary. Remember that having both of those makes your paragraphs a lot stronger than just having one of them. You're painting a picture for the reader and explaining what you think it means. Now we don't have time to show my entire writing process, so I'm going to skip ahead to the finished effect paragraph. If you want to see the whole essay, you can download it on my blog. Just click the link in the video description below. Here is the finished effect paragraph. We didn't really know what to expect when we told students to put their earbuds in and go through the video lesson, but we were flabbergasted at the results. Our bright, sweet, but often restless freshmen were totally focused on their computer screens. We saw lots of pausing and writing and even going back to rewatch parts of the demonstration. The room was totally silent, but for the occasional click of mouse buttons. After about 15 minutes of this, I started to feel a little miffed. They never concentrated so well during a live lesson. But I had to remind myself that it was still me teaching them. It took me stepping back from my ego a bit to realize that this type of lesson delivery seemed to engage students' attention much more effectively. 
They could go at their own pace and watch something again if they didn't catch it all. And there were fewer distractions between their eyes and the computer screen than there were between their eyes and me at the front of the classroom. I also started thinking about how much material absentees missed. Sure, they could come in for tutoring, but they rarely did. Usually their makeup lessons were squeezed into a minute or two before class or while they were supposed to be working on the current lesson. How much better if they could watch the entire unabridged lesson at home? The real test, however, was the finished essays, and they bore out all the positive things we had seen. They were far better than anything the students had turned in all year, better thought out, more detailed, more carefully crafted. I hope that you could see that there is a difference between this anecdote and a straight up narrative. This one feels more like an explanation than like a story. But like I said earlier, if you're concerned about whether anecdotes pull you away from the expository mode, look into it to make sure you're okay. Now let's have a look at the color coded version. Notice that I've changed the topic sentence a little from the one in the kernel essay. That's because I decided to move the ELA Academy part of it to a separate paragraph. Please don't ever think that your original text structure and kernel essay are written in stone. In fact, here's what the text structure of my actual essay looks like. You can see that I've added a whole new paragraph to it, and that's perfectly okay. I hope this demonstration has helped you understand expository writing better. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest so that you can be notified when I post new videos in this series. And don't forget, you can download the entire expository essay and find other helpful materials at elaacademy.us. This is ELA Academy.